What's up guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we'll be taking you through the best new updates in Adobe Photoshop 2021. You can also download a free template file from the description below this video that you can use to follow along with. Ok I'm going to pass you over to Rory now who will take you through these features. Thanks Ross. So here we are in the new Adobe Photoshop 2021 with our template file open. Now the first feature we're going to be looking at is the new sky replacement. So I'm just going to enable this first layer called landscape one where we have this image. And this new feature is probably one of the best I think that they've introduced as it's so easy to use. So we're essentially going to completely replace this sky within this image with a completely different sky. So simply to do that, all I need to do is go up to edit it and we now have this option here that says sky replacement if I click that we'll get a dialog box popping up and you can see already this is changing so if you're doing this on your own machine this may well look different these are the previous settings that we had used but you can see up at the top here we have a drop down and we can actually select from all of these different preset sky images and it's automatically going to mask this in in place of the original sky within our image I can also toggle down this blue skies option and we could go for something a little bit more bright and you can see what a good job this does. Now it is obviously going to be image specific and if you've got something with a lot of complexity in the sky or horizon area it may not handle it quite as well but as you can see here this is doing an excellent job in this image. What's also really interesting is that it's making colour adjustments to our foreground as well so you'll see we have this foreground adjustments toggle here where we can adjust the amount of lighting changes based on the sky preset we choose. So if I bump this right up for example you can see it's slightly darkening. I could take this right down and you can see it's lightening up a bit. I can also adjust the colour so with no colour adjustment applied this is what the image looks like by default but if I boost this right up you can see it's shifting to suit the sky. So this is really interesting. I think it does a really good job and it's so easy to use. We also have things like brightness, temperature and scale for the sky as well so I can actually adjust how scaled up it is. I can adjust the temperature over here so we could warm this up if we wanted to and I can adjust the brightness. Let's bump the brightness up a touch. So an incredibly useful new feature and I think this is definitely one of the best to be added in Adobe Photoshop 2021. So let's scale the sky back up a touch and click OK and you'll also notice that all of these adjustments get placed into their own folder here. So if I toggle this you can see this is just a folder sitting above our image layer and within here we have all of the different settings so we have the sky brightness temperature we have the actual image and the mask for the image as well as the foreground adjustments as well so this can all be easily edited afterwards as well and you can fine-tune this to your liking let's turn these layers off for now and let's move on to the next feature which is the new neural filters so the first one we're going to look at is for skin smoothing so we can find these by going up to filter and you can see we have a new option here that says neural filter now these filters work with the new Adobe Sensei AI platform that they're using in a lot of their software now so we can get some really interesting effects on the back of these. So the first one we're going to look at is this skin smoothing. Now if you're opening this for the first time you may have to download this first but it only takes a few seconds to do so and I can toggle this on here and already by default you can see this is having an effect. So I have a blur value which I can bump up and I also have a smoothness value as well so we can adjust these to smooth out this skin. If I toggle this off you can see what a difference this is making. Now obviously I'm taking this to an extreme level here but I can click OK and you can see this creates a new layer over in our layers panel. So I could always apply a layer mask to this layer and we can mask out any areas that we don't want as well. So we've got plenty of control with this. I could remove some of that smoothing around the nose specifically just to get rid of the intensity of the effect in certain areas if I want to. So we've got plenty of control with this and if I toggle this layer now you can see the difference it's making. This is going to be another very useful feature. So again let's turn off these layers. We'll move on to our next example and this is another one of the new neural filters. So again going up to filter, neural filters. Now over on the left hand side we have a small icon for beta filters. So these are still in testing technically. So it's worth noting that these may well change when they are fully introduced if that makes sense. But the 
one we're going to look at now is Smart Portrait and it's pretty incredible in how it works. So again, I'm going to enable this by toggling this icon. You will also have to download this one. But what we can actually do is change the facial expressions within an image. Now bear in mind, this is just a flat raster image that we downloaded from a stock website. There's absolutely nothing special going on with the image itself. But again, using Adobe Sensei, it's able to detect the facial elements and manipulate them based on the settings. So you can see the top one here says be happy. So I'm going to check that box and we've got a slider here, which I'm just going to bump up a touch. And this may take a few seconds to adjust, but as you can see, our image has now changed and we now have a smiling person. So again, if I toggle the smart portrait filter off, you can see this is the original back on. This is the updated version. So this is incredibly clever. We can also adjust settings for how surprised the person looks. We can make him look angry or not angry. And we can also adjust things like the facial age. So let's check that. If I slide this up again, you can see we're able to make the person look older. If I slide this back down, we can go the opposite way and make him look younger. So this is really impressive. We can also do things like gaze where we can actually adjust where his eyes are looking. So if I slide this over to the right, give it a second and you can see he's now looking off to the right hand side. It does an incredibly good job. We've also got things like hair thickness. So again, let's bump this right up, for example, and we can give him more hair. Now, obviously it's not going to do an absolutely perfect job everywhere. Some areas look a little bit unnatural and we do have some slight ghosting up around the hair, but this is still in beta and it's still pretty incredible that we're able to do this at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And again, we have a new layer created that we can always mask as well. So turning that layer off, this was our original image and turning it back on, this is what we have now. So really quite incredible what we can do with these new neural filters. We have another one to look at now though. So turning on the layer that says landscape two, we're going to go back up to filter, neural filters. And this is another beta filter. But as you can see, we've got a black and white image here. And this is another pretty impressive option. So if I go to my beta filters, you'll see we have this option that says colorize. So this is basically a new filter where we can actually colorize black and white images. Now again, it's not perfect. If I check this option, you can see all of a sudden our image has been colorized based on Adobe Sensei analyzing the photo and essentially picking relevant colors based on what it thinks. Now this photo works particularly well because it's relatively simple in color anyway, but don't expect miracles from this. If you have more complex photos, it's not easy to colorize them. But as we say, this is still in beta, so this filter could well improve upon its final release. Now you'll see we have a thumbnail of the image here. We have some color sliders here, so I can shift the general hue of this image, move this more towards red if we want to make slight adjustments to the color it's applied. But what we can also do is if I click this color tile here, we get our color picker up and let's pick a green color, for example. We'll go with quite a dark green. If I click OK, what I can now do is click within this image thumbnail and you can see it's going to place a small dot within the thumbnail and that's essentially going to try and apply color to that area or to that exposure. So you can see the bottom section of our image now looks very green and so do the darker areas of the mountain as well because they all fall within that exposure. I'm easily able to move this around as well. If I was to move this up to the cloud area, you can see that's going to adjust the hue of the clouds. So we have a bit more control in this sense, but it would be nice to be able to zoom into this thumbnail image and make more precise edits in this way. You can always double click back into this color and maybe darken this down, maybe shift this a little bit more towards the blue hue and click OK. I could always add another one as well. So just clicking within the thumbnail image, we've added a new color. I can click on my colors and let's add something slightly warmer here. So let's go with that, click OK. And you can see this is affecting most of this mountain here. What I could always do is just click on this again and adjust the color from here to do that. Equally, if you want to get rid of one of these colors, you can just click the minus icon next to the color tile and that's going to remove it. But in this case, let's just go ahead and add one more and I'm just going to pick something quite dark here. Let's add one more in the sky as well and we can change the color of the sky. Again, as you can see, I could pick something quite bright and we could create an orange sky although I'm not sure why you would want to do that. So let's go back in and pick a dark blue instead. And there you have it. So again, I'll click OK and toggling the new layer that's being created, you can see what a difference that makes. So this is a 
really impressive feature. I think it's just the starting point for something like this, but the potential for this kind of filter is huge. So let's turn off those layers for now, and we're going to move on to another new feature, which is the new refine hair option when we're using the select and mask feature. So we have this simple image here, and what I'm going to do is just go up to select and down to select and mask. Now over in our properties option on the right hand side, I'm going to change our view to on black for this example, and I'm going to bump up the opacity so that anything that's not selected is completely black, just so we can see this a little bit more clearly. Now across the top, we have our usual select subject option, which does a really good job. So if I click this, as you can see, it's doing a fantastic job of making a selection around this person. However, we now have this refine hair option, which in this case is going to do quite a subtle job. But if I click it, you can see around the hair specifically, it's made a much more precise selection. It's still including the finer hairs and the finer details in and around the hair as well. But generally, this has done a much better job. I still have my settings over on the right hand side, like the radius that I can adjust. I could enable smart radius. We can smooth this out slightly and feather it as well if we want to. But if I go ahead and click OK, this has done a great job. And this is a much cleaner way of cutting out people, especially with fine hair details that need to also be selected. So moving on to the last feature we're going to be focusing on in this video, and that's the new live shape options. So these have been a little bit of a bugbear for us for a while in Photoshop, but with these new updates, they are much more usable. So starting with the rectangle tool, which is U on the keyboard, I'm just going to click and drag out a rectangle. And at the moment we just have a black fill, but over in my properties or up in my options panel, I can always click on the fill tile and we could pick something else. Let's just pick this orange, for example. We now have these live corner widgets, which we have in the likes of Illustrator, which are very easy to use. So we can always round off corners by clicking and dragging on them. If I hold Option or Alt on a PC, I can just adjust one of them as well. So we can keep specific corners sharp if we want to as well. And we can always resize this holding Shift. You can see it's going to maintain those corner radius as well. So already this is much more intuitive to use and more in line with what we're used to in the likes of Illustrator. I could also go up to my stroke and if I click on that, let's select a blue color, for example, and we can bump up the stroke weight as you can see here. I can go into my stroke options as well and change the alignment, for example. I could also change the caps and corners to be rounded and even choose a dashed or dotted line if I wanted to. So this is also very useful. Clicking and holding on the rectangle tool, we also have a new triangle tool. So again, I can click and drag. If I hold shift, that's going to lock it to be an equilateral triangle. I also have the ability to just click once with any of these tools to enter precise values. And you can see we have an equilateral checkbox there as well. So this is also very useful. And you can see I still have my corner widget so I can round off these corners if I wanted to as well. Lastly, we'll take a quick look at the line tool. This is much improved because previously we essentially were creating a small rectangle instead of a line, which really wasn't very helpful in a lot of situations. So now if I click and drag, we are simply creating two points like we would do in the likes of Illustrator when creating a path. And again, we can adjust things like the stroke weight with ease here and reposition this to our liking. So these are much improved and I think the shape tools are much more usable in the likes of Photoshop now. So that rounds up our favorite features of the brand new Adobe Photoshop 2021. Okay guys, if you have any questions, then do drop a comment down below this video and we'll do our best to help. Thank you.